Hey, it's your client's been out of here. And you're about to watch a video where I talk with a buddy of mine, Ryan Wells. He's a marketing guru and also loves AI. And I knew he would understand the ideas I was having. I was talking to a friend of mine, Mike Courtney, about using AI and influencing people. So check it out. It's We don't get into the programming, but we get some of the implications and what you could do and how you could be better at actually getting people to um, to buy your stuff or to hire you or whatever. So I hope you enjoy the video. Please like the video right now. And if you like, it really help me out. Have a great day. Cheers. All right. So let me set the stage. So, and I didn't send it to you because I know, because Nick Colinda, remember you, you're the one that actually yeah, met. Yeah. 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 I don't know if you saw his email uh, uh, last, I think last week, this week on no. uh, using ugly fonts and how to. All right. Basically, if you're a big branded company, you have everything standardized, right? And he and the yes. argument is, hey, use an ugly, not necessarily ugly, but something different, yeah. so make it stand out, right? And yeah. um, so a buddy of mine, Mike Courtney, um, he he reached out to me, and we were having a call talking about this topic in general. And he's like, Joe, with your knowledge of um, like Dan Kennedy stuff or copywriting stuff, you know, maybe you should create an AI that would allow people to get copy and you hit a button and you're like, here are 12 copywriting tricks that we can do to your thing to improve it. Right. And I'm like, yeah. And I'm like, uh, that's definitely going to happen, you know, here. And, and actually what would be really cool is if you could implement that with AB testing as well, here's the four I want to try and it does it for you. Right. I'm like, that's, that's definitely common. It's, it's something that to me is so common of a thing that like, I don't really personally have a plan to implement that. Cause I'm like, I'm sure someone's going to work on that soon. Right. But, um, as we kept talking, we were um, discussing about using AI and that. And what was interesting was we were realizing now this goes back to like NLP and which when you learn anything about psychology, people like uh, people that are like them, right? And what was interesting to me was we were talking a bit about how we will give like we have AIs now that we give them our. Email, like let's say Gmail, when you're typing, Gmail looks at your past stuff. So it it does a decent job of mimicking you because it sees your past work, right? So it it has the borrows your your flavor, your style, right? Yep. This is yep. this none of this is exciting. You know, uh, it's interesting, but not nothing like aha. The real aha I had was holy shit, it's backwards, right? In sales right? What we should be doing. And let's say you have a job interview or you're selling, like I just told you, I ordered that backhoe, right? It was $3,000. If you're trying to get a sale from someone, what you should try to do is go like scrape their, their profile or get emails or papers they've written and shove those in. And then you borrow their style and you write to them in their style, right? Because they will think you are more like them because you've copied their style, right? And I'm like, oh my God, that's, you know, totally opposite of what we think because right now we're trying, we want it to sound like us, but that's not what's really best in the sales situation when you're trying to influence someone, you want it in their style. And I'm like, that's actually kind of inverse of what I think everyone's doing right now, right? We're, we're trying to get it to replicate ourselves because um, it, 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 we think it sounds good because... That's how we write. You know what I mean? You want to instinctively frame it in a context. So, yes, I totally agree with you. And you're absolutely right. In a context and in a language that they can best relate to. Right. So another way of saying what you said, unpacking what you said in a certain way is we might use an example or we might use language that we understand. And often you see it in sales. People are quite critical that it's too technical or not technical enough or right. Use right. a term that maybe, obviously, we're in different countries that you may understand and I don't understand, or vice versa, or the cultural references or the technical references. And if you can reframe that conversation in the context of the person you're delivering it to, that's likely to resonate more and have more impact, and they'll relate to it more easily and yeah. more effectively. So right. You're right. So rather than try to, I guess the, the the intersection here between the current state and the future state is that as a company or as a sales company, a, a company, you, you'll have an idea of what your product value is, what your brand positioning is, what your brand personality is. But rather than just look to replicate that or scale it up, you need to think about, okay, well, how do we best connect with the customer? You know, and that also may be, it may not just be in the language. It might also be in the length of the length, like the length of the text, the directness of the text, Absolutely. So the many channel that they use. Yeah. 
Because if you look at their engagement with communication, it may also be that they prefer a direct communication or a voicemail or a tweet or a tweet, or they like long form explanations, or they're very rational, or they're very emotional, or they 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 prefer when you use anecdotes, or they hate using they want concrete statistics. So if you can frame that from that knowledge in their context, I love it. Yeah, really, really good yeah. insight. Yeah, it was just it was it was just funny because it, it like I said, it, it's sort of the opposite. I know it's not quite, and I know a lot of us we try to do that. Like me with with my a lot of my target market, right? With the radiologists and stuff, I'm I'm gearing things more towards them. But it's not quite mm. the same thing as saying, well, I'm going to try to completely convert it into who I'm talking to. And so when I talk, because I when I read something, and I was telling them, I'm like, you know, I was reading a book by Julian Simon um mm. years ago and i'm like god this guy's a genius he's so smart he's a genius. and then i finally realized i'm like why do i think he's so smart because he's not mm. saying anything you know world changing but mm. what i finally realized was it's because he writes exactly how i write you know and it was it was the fact that it it really felt like i was it was already it was something i wrote and and it was that that i'm like that's why i liked him so much was because he writes mm. exactly how i write mm. But if you think about what we do and how we use it, we do use it to mimic ourselves and we do use it, if you like, to bring scalability or resilience so we can do, we can achieve more quicker. But if you think about, and I agree with you totally, your context, the, the missing gap or the bridge is between what we want to say and who we want to talk to right. and how we adapt what right. we want to say yeah. to the audience. Yeah, and I think I've told you about a buddy of mine. He he's he's a Java developer for like 25 years, right? And he's one of the very few people I've met that can talk to anybody at any level. He adjusts mm -hmm. his conversation because he knows the the deepest level of everything, but he also can talk to the a layman and and explain it well, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, he that's why one of the reasons why I think he's so quote unquote smart is because he and he does it naturally and you don't even notice, right? But that's where it it's if we were using AI better to, to again, adapt, which most of us try to do somewhat, right? But I think it's just different to be like, hey, I have an interview with with you. You're you're my potential boss. I'm going to go look on LinkedIn. I'm going to see if you've published any papers. I'm going to use that to shove into AI to write my, my what's right. it called, letter, your, right. your cover letter, right. to send to right. you, right? right. Like, because yeah. suddenly when yeah. somebody gets it, they're like, wow, this is really, and it's like, yeah, yeah it's because yeah. they mimicked, you know, that person. So right? if you decon if you deconstruct what you said in a different way, so if you imagine the LLM is your knowledge as you're trying to sell something, it's your knowledge, it's your yeah. database of product right. insights, communication, whatever. And then if we think about what traditionally happens, people interact with the chat bot, right? And they use their language to try to get out of it what they want and the exactly. AI yeah. layer interprets the LLM. But but, and obviously also it has the ability to look back, if you like, on what previous queries were, so it can perhaps refine the output. Right. But is but is it, and, and certainly it can do, but is there the scope for ingesting, if you like? Because if you think about the, the, the query is the question the person's asking, and the knowledge base is the LLM that you're querying, right? But imagine a situation where you're querying a database, so the LLM, you're asking it a question, but to help with the context on the reply, it actually learns, to your point, more about you. So as a user who's interacting, you first connect your social accounts, your LinkedIn's, your Facebook's, to understand how you like to learn and how you like to be communicated to. So particularly in the sales context, if you kind of had a two two sides, you had the knowledge on one side and you had the, com the communications um, experience on the other, and you fuse them together, you would then get the knowledge coming out of the database in the context, in the way that the user would find, or the, certainly the company trying to sell it, the most effective, because it would present back information to the person querying it in the most powerful way. Because I, I agree, I think at the moment, it's much more one-dimensional. It's the person right. querying the database, and right. if they don't like what they want, they... Because if you think about it, in a way, it is learning, because you, it replies... And then right. you can ask answer more, ask more queries to get more replies and refine. But what if it already knew, not just from your LLM query history, but your social media engagement, other things, how you like to learn or how you like to communicate? That's right. a dimension that's not quite there, is it? 
Yeah, right, right. I was going to tell him, even my son, like, he has a girlfriend now, but I'm like, if you wanted to date the girl, right, you would go, you sick an LLM, you know, a, a thing to understand then yeah. the, what they find out, how they talk, what they like, whatever. And then now you have an idea of how to actually interact with them in their way, right, in what they like. And it just uh, makes a lot of sense to me. Um, obviously, it's it's... Yeah. It, that implies you have content on the other your target, right? Whether the whether that target and that's what market research is doing, right? Often when we study mm -hmm. an age group or demographic of a target market, we're we're seeing similarities of them, but not at a personal level, right? This allows us mm -hmm. to be like at a personal level, mimic truly to mm -hmm. that individual, because even within mm -hmm. a very tight demographic, you and I have a lot of similarities, right? But we still have huge differences between us, mm -hmm. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's where that with 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 uh, AI, we'd be able to bridge that and really target individuals exactly with how they they want. Because at some point, if you have enough exchanges with people, right, you could be adjusting your newsletter or whatever to everyone and exactly how they 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 like. And that's a really interesting insight as well, because I don't think that's really being done very well or very easily at the moment. I think that's definitely something that is definitely able to be done, but is not being executed very well. That there's not a, if you think about again, the LLM is a repository of knowledge, or you've got a database, CMS, whatever. How how can you um, query it almost, if you like, to give people individual newsletter content exactly. that they want? Right, it um, needs to be adjusted for each person. Again, right yeah. now, I think both of us think it's. It's done as a whole for everybody, but it'd be better if it was done individually on everybody, um, which is going to be obviously some work to do. And you need data to do it. But again, yeah. you know, maybe you can find, yeah. maybe yeah. you have people fill out a few questions, yeah. right, to get to get an idea um, yeah. or, or have them yeah. write a couple paragraphs, yeah. right? Um, but but again, also, that's why yeah, I was thinking they more. Like to be communicated with, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but I was thinking more. With things around high ticket sales, right? That's where, mm -hmm. like, hey, there's probably people you're targeting. You can probably find information on them, and you could probably get some of the information and shove it into, you know, some sort of a thing to help you understand their type, right? Like to to help you understand how you should be writing them, yes. because sometimes there's, you know, yes, hundred thousand dollars on the line for your sale, and that's where, like, this to me right now it makes sense, and someday you know, five years, uh, two years from now with the crazy advancements, what we're now describing with the customized mm. newsletter, everybody probably will happen. Right. But, but mm. the first step of course, is just mm. Mm. saying, let's do it on a one-off basis with someone, you know, like I said, like mm. I have a job interview mm. and I want to really make sure I do well with mm. each, each person. I know mm. I'm going to interview with these five people. Hey, I'm going to study, you mm. know, how they, how they talk, how they work and change my, mm the way I convey things to them, right? Um, even your thank you notes or right. whatever, right? But so on that point, if you think about it, there's a very well-developed and it's, it's pretty mature, getting much more mature, what they would call sentiment analysis. Sure. But that's yep. a lagging indicator, but that's a lagging indicator. So you you would communicate something and then you would get understand whether it's voice or digital or text, whatever. You would understand how they react to that, right? Yeah, so right. It's judging the sentiment. Yeah. But that's lagging. What you want right. is to have some leading indicators to go, okay, these are the types exactly. of ways we want to communicate before exactly, and then track the lagging because um, we, we, we think we know how to communicate to them and then we measure if that's successful. Yeah. Right. So it's, we're, it's, we are reactive to their behaviors. Right. But if we could be proactive and understand there are different um, cohorts of, of customer or prospect and how to communicate best to them, then we could, of course, A-B test, but we could perhaps have more success more soon because we would already be trying to communicate in a way that they are most familiar with. Or right. even, and as I say, it's not even just, it's not even just whether it's a text-based email that's got five bullet points or it's a long form message. It's also about what the example is. So it's an example because yeah. they just made a, chocolate chip cookies so let's use a chocolate chip cookie example not use a dallas cowboys example because they hate hate american football or whatever you know so even right. that insight is useful when you're forming the messaging yeah yeah and then imagine you know again like maybe five to ten years from now 
how much harder it's going to be once people are doing this. Like, you know, let's say you're on the back end and when people are approaching you, man, it's going to be much harder to say no and like to differentiate, you know, to, to not go with the person because you're like, they're going to be so good at, at knowing exactly what buttons to push and how to push them, right? And how to um, talk to you in a way um, to influence you, right? Because that's what it's all about to some degree or another. But yeah, I, I thought that was just way, really interesting. In a way, it, if you think about the way things have evolved, we've kind of had this idea of like scalability and one to many. So, so one message pushed to many and all of that sort of thing. But we're kind of getting to a stage with the ability of the scalability and the versatility of, of AI and the use of LLMs, actually many to many. Yeah. So there are many different ways they can communicate to us and there are many different ways we can communicate to them. And actually, it's not about any much more about about broadcast it's that narrow cast or one-to-one and the scalability is coming through the technology to communicate a, an in, a distinctively individual message it, at scale i was going to say mail. yeah and, and i'm agreeing 100 percent with you i'm just trying to think of how you would phrase it it's a one to one many you know what i mean like it's a yes. one-to-one but yes. to a lot of people right and that's that's what it yes. really it really should yes. be and once we get there, and that's going to be a real paradigm shift, and that's going to be a real oh, shift because we don't no. because even the way LLM, the way AI is being applied now, it's still this idea of many on one end and one on the other. If you right. like, it's still it's still right. not the tools. The tools are there, the technology is there, but I don't think it's being effectively applied as well as it could be to particularly this this um, proactive insight on the customer, those leading indicators to understand how to shape the message that we can do it reactively and iterate right. on it. But right. why don't we shift that insight earlier and try well, to learn from their past experiences before yeah. they even interact with us and yeah. see how we might be able to communicate. With them. And again, today with so much information available already, usually on like Facebook or LinkedIn or whatever about a person, right? Like you can gather so much information and absolutely curtail your message to them that you you know it's going to be much more likely to be accepted and and desired even mm. well you should be able to know programmatically which channels they prefer and what times they are at least posting on those channels obviously it may some of it may be automated but when they might when they might um interact or if there are any kind of usage patterns so it's always at two o'clock in the afternoon or it's always the third tuesday or it's always after a right you know a dallas cowboys game or whatever and how can you inject your messaging into that, into yeah. that loop? timing is one of the most and and ironically it's probably the least one paid attention to but timing is so critical, right? We've talked about it with, with like Dan Kennedy talks about most advertising is assuming you're ready to buy now. And I know that's not the timing you're talking about, right? But um, it, it goes after everyone as if they're ready to buy right now and it doesn't really warm them up and teach them stuff, right? And um, But if you knew, like you said, like, hey, they're, they're going through this process, but hey, they do watch TV at this time or they're more likely to actually check their emails at this time adjusting that that when you're sending it out is one aspect of the time but there's so many other aspects as well that that could be measured and incorporated into everything you're doing because we think about we think about like the customer journey but the customer journey is always in the context of my transaction that i want to raise awareness influence get them to purchase yep. whatever but it's always my my customer my journey the customer journey with me but there might be other things beyond my customer's journey that are with other cust other journeys that they're having or other communication engagement pieces that, that may inform when you could um, inject your communications to be more successful, as well as the context, what you're saying, what you're saying, when you're saying, how you're saying, where you're saying. Right. You know, right. All, all very important. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Anyway, I, I don't know if there's anything we can chat about, but I just thought that was uh, really interesting. And and hopefully, I, I think it's something that's definitely doable at some point, right? Especially the beginning part of a one-off, you know, trying to influence an individual. Hey, you could, I think, gather information from them. You submit, like, let's say you've written papers, right? I can submit those 
and then say, now with that style, you know, write me a, a letter to this person and it would borrow that style really well, right? Like that's a very easy use case. We could do that right now. I guess in a practical sense, if you had their, I think if you had their social media accounts, you could have a look at what they're interested in and what they're messaging on. And you could maybe, like, say, for example, with your emails you send out, adapt them to be more in the context of the the customer that you're Absolutely. sending it to. Yeah. Or, you know, the, the, the user that you're sending to. Because uh, I'm wondering where you would actually get that data from. Yeah. You well, have to get it from their social media, I think. Right. And that's why I was saying is like, I think that's a big part of it. However, and, and I suggested this to my friend 10 years ago when she was, she was doing sales and she would travel to a given area. And I'm like, well, hey, if you're going to travel to Boston, why don't you change your LinkedIn picture of you with like the Boston, is it Red Sox? I don't, I don't follow sports right behind you. Right. So when, the, when they, when you reach out to them and you say, Hey, I'm going to be in town, would you be up for visiting, you know, for a, for a quick chat? And they look at your picture and they, they, you'll connect closer with them. And that was one, it was a telltale because they're in Boston and they're men. They probably care about, you know, sports, right? It's a dumb one, but it was still something. I mean, also, I, mean, I guess the most traditional one is what have they bought before and how can you use that in language? Yeah. as well yeah and that's a big one which most businesses don't do like the restaurants are getting better at it hey i'm gonna track you've been here five times before look every time you order the same damn thing when i do things to you i should be mentioning that thing like you know yeah. it's, it's a great tease right but i wonder um, how you could apply it for your bits and pieces in the in the short term just as well, I, could, I could look at the previous downloads of what they've got before right and and offer mm. them up the next level you know kind of thing for we did actually one. Um, we looked at the course if they if they're past you know downloads and purchases of courses and anyone who's never purchased a course we we propose that they try the intro course. Anyone who bought the intro course we bumped them to the intermediate course. Anyone who bought the intermediate course we bumped them to the objects course. Right. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. A little, but I, it's, I once it's different. Scoped, I once scoped out something like this for advertising product that I had an idea for, which was basically kind of similar, which was looking at past purchase behaviors and looking at other sort of environmental conditions, which might influence what you might advertise. So uh -huh. for example, you'd have like a, like say it's an ad for target, but if it was raining in, in Austin, Texas, you'd show rain yeah. coats and you'd have a local tag. And I wonder if you think about your emails or an email in that sort of context, what's kind of the, what would be kind of, for example, if there's a holiday coming up, you could easily have parameters that if there was a like, if there was a, ho a federal holiday coming up or a state holiday coming up, if there was weather, that there would be yeah. different things that you could conditionally include in the email to make it more relatable. Well, yeah, what it, they purchase all those sort of things. With with the main, per there's a couple I think goals, but the one is so you Ryan feel I'm talking to you. Right. Exactly. Oh, this exactly. was personalized to me. I need to pay attention. Right. Because most of us, when you think you're talking to a person, you're much more likely to actually interact and pay attention. Right. And yeah. that's what all of that, yeah. I think, is to try yeah. to do. Yeah. Yeah. And that's also, in a way, ironically, why things like those nine, that nine word email works, if you know about that one. Because yeah, it's like right. basically, it just yeah. asks you a question, which yeah. is so short, it doesn't look like you don't care. Like it does, it doesn't look like it's generic. Right. And it actually prompts you, it, it forces you to reply. Yeah. And then boom, there's some dialogue going on. It, one of my, and I, I don't remember who, where I read it from. It was from a copywriter, but he said, when you ask a person a question, it's like grabbing them by the lapels and getting, you know, getting their attention. Right. And that was exactly like in LinkedIn, I would tell people just ask a freaking question. Right. When, and don't throw all this blah, vomit up stuff. Right. Just say, Hey, how can I help you today? Like, how, how are you using auto hotkey? Right. Like it, people feel compelled to answer that. Right. They, they, they feel, they feel like, like, oh man, okay, I'll, 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 I'll reply, but don't just mm. vomit up like 8 million things. Here's what we offer with 80 things. Right. It's, it's, it's such a turnoff. No one replies well, to I that. I think that's a really good insight you brought up before of like, don't, don't react to what people do. Be proactive yeah. and learn what they've done and then apply that before you message them. In, in the same curtailing your message yeah, both yeah, things, yeah, right yeah, like yeah. both to what they've done and the style 
to represent how that person communicates, right? Like that's that's, that's what right, just right. Like yeah, as you say, the, that's going to be the most effective to get right. their attention. Yeah, yeah. That's what I thought was funny was when we when we go to like uh, tools right now, we are usually trying to curtail them to what we like. But that isn't what we should be doing. We should be curtailing it to what I think, you know, hopefully. And, and that's what got me to think about it was, well, how would I know what, Ryan, how you like to be communicated? Well, I can go get anything where you've written before, right, and actually use that uh, with AI to mirror it, right, to, to adjust to it. Well, a good example of that would be I might have a hot topic that I always like to tweet about or an opinion, right? Like you wouldn't, you might write me about something to do with, I don't know, um, Joe Biden being a decrepit grandpa. Oh, no. And that's it's more likely, guy. and that might resonate more with me than if I was living in Rhode Island and Providence, Rhode Island, that was a hard yeah. Democrat. Right. So you wouldn't say that right. to me. You would say right. something else. Yes. So you can see that that all works, that could really work. I guess the question is how do you then industrialize that to make that an easy thing right. that people put in there? Because I, I kind of think it's like you want to have like a short code type, like, snippet manager thing that they that you ingest a few sources you say and then it and then interprets and writes a sentence or two that that starts to personalize yep. it well and that's why i was saying is like i i can see right now i can do this i can go find your facebook page if you were doing it a lot and and i could go and get these and shove them at, or find yeah. articles you've written or whatever right yeah. yeah even we have videos they could find our video channel and put it in there unfortunately it's both of us so it, it would be a little blurred but to gather your style right of how you talk um However, yeah. that next level yeah. of doing yeah. it to the masses, that's where, that's why I'm like, yeah, that's going to be, you know, more work. But people already, you can buy people's social media links, right? Then you just have to go scrape them and see what they're interested in, how they, what the things they post about, right? Do you know, do you know the tool called Crystal Nose? Do you know this? No. Okay. This will, this is, is quite creepy good. So there is a plugin, it's a paid one, but there's like, 10 per month or something. I'll put the link to you. It's called Crystal Nose. What it does is it, it analyzes your LinkedIn, right? And it tells you how to communicate to the people. Oh, really? Yeah, that sounds... Like it's, yeah, it's actually a really interesting insight. And it kind of, it, it, it does all sorts. It's actually, I think, quite effective. And it, like it says, you know, like, like my one, I'll see if I can find my one actually, but it says like, don't be closed minded and negative to me because I don't like that. I like blue sky thinkers and all that kind of, so it kind of tells you how to, I'll, it's in there, but I'll put it in the chat with you. Yeah. Definitely worth installing. Uh, you get like 10 free and do it on you, do it on someone else, you know, and you'll yeah. see uh, because it's those kind of, even, even if you scraped those insights from LinkedIn right. and then tailored the communication to match those talking points. Right. Which I think they probably do because they actually recommend some text. But if you could supplement that via also social media insights about this is the anecdote, this is where they live and all that, that starts to become really, really interesting from a lead gen perspective. And in back when I worked in market research, that's where you do segmentation type analysis because with crystal, like yeah. this kind of thing, yeah, you're yeah, gonna yeah, build yeah. like four or five profiles and then because you didn't have a way yeah. to individually do what we're talking about. But that's where I think with AI, we literally could get it down yeah. to the individual yeah. and, and yeah. curtail our yeah, message yeah, yeah, to yeah, each yeah. person, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which is really, yeah. really cool. And that's what this what that's what this does, but it, it doesn't I don't think it back ends into a CRM or a marketing automation tool or anything like that. But it does give you and at least that what I reckon this will ultimately get purchased by a a HubSpot type company because it is it, it because you can see where those those things start to merge together. The insight about the individual and the ability to like contextualize the the messaging. I'm um, I'm disappointed. I, mean, I, I think if you could do this kind of thing with also what's that? No, sorry for I, I was laughing because I'm I'm like ooh creepy cool. Let's see if that domain's available. No, it's a it's premium good, sorry, domain. Unfortunately, it. what's that? Yeah, but th that's a good tool. So I would definitely, yeah. the crystal nose thing, I would definitely try that out because I think yeah. that um, uh, for lead gen for certain types of people, 
high value people. And if you can then fuse that with social media insights, I don't know if they have an API or anything, but but that starts to become super sexy. They also have um like um they have um psychographic um data points on your whether you are assertive or diplomatic or whatever the whatever they are. Yep. You know, different um um psychographic uh yep. and attitudinal um communication traits. And so if you can use those insights plus the knowledge of the, of how they communicate as well as how to effectively get in front of them, I think the intersection of those two things becomes very powerful, particularly for high value people, as you were saying. Um, yeah, totally. Yeah, good. And everything else good? Yeah. All right, well, I'm going to 